Why the hell has the richest man in the world been developing rockets for more than 20 years and after getting his overpriced uppy downy fairground ride working has failed to launch this fully reusable rocket more than six times or once every two months? And then on top of that, what's happening with the orbital rocket he's been working on for 10 years while SpaceX have built, certified and launched humans from their orbital rocket and already prototyping a much bigger fully reusable mega rocket for lunar and Mars exploration? Also in this time, smaller, less affluent rocket manufacturers like Rocket Lab, Relativity Space, Orbex and Astra are either well on the road to orbital rocket manufacture or, like with the case with Rocket Lab, are actually right now sending missions to the moon. Blue Origin seem way off the pace in this new paradigm of commercial space exploration, despite having the incredible resources of Bank of Bezos. Why is this? I'd love to know your thoughts. So. Let me know why you think Blue Origin are losing this new space race in the comments below. Or maybe you don't think Blue Origin are floundering but have a sneaky game plan. Let me know what you think. In fact, let me know what you think right now and then let me know if I've changed your mind when we get to the end. We read every single comment and we respond to every sane one. If you remember all the way back in 2000, a bookshop keeper called Jeff Bezos started up a space company called Blue Origin and everybody laughed because dot-com millionaires clearly had delusions of grandeur and internet bubbles burst all the time, leaving a MySpace or Alta Vista shaped stain on the floor where a once profitable company once thrived. Then, two years later, an online payment peddler called Elon Musk set up a space company called SpaceX and everyone laughed because this was becoming a trend for dot-com millionaires to waste their money on fantastic boondoggles. Then two years later, a beardy billionaire, Richard Branson, set up a space company called Virgin Galactic and everyone, well certainly here in the UK, thought OK, there might be something in this. Branson does have a lot of experience with running a big airline, a group of hundreds of global brands and ballooning adventures to the edge of space. But then for the next 10 years, all we got from any of them was research and development conducted in secret or splashy images of the future of spaceflight they were going to deliver or news stories about accidents and tragedies. And during this time, Bezos was going from a millionaire bookshop keeper to the richest man in the world and ploughing enormous amounts of cash into his pet project, Blue Origin. What we learned was, regardless of the cash, it was an enormous endeavour to accelerate the learning and tech development gained over many decades by giants like Boeing, Northrop Grumman and Lockheed Martin in just 10 or 15 years. But the agility of these much smaller companies, unconstrained by NASA's processors and health and safety demands, meant they could very quickly adopt new technologies in critical areas like composite development and manufacture, automated rocket throttling, artificial intelligence and sensor fusion for automated guidance on landing. This meant that by around 2015, we're starting to see SpaceX and Blue Origin emerge as a real force in the space sector. And major credit has to go to NASA for their commercial crew program that provided an orbital mission challenge, funds and critical expertise to the most promising of these commercial space companies. Some fell by the wayside, some flourished. One became the uncontested winner, SpaceX. But since that time, when both Blue Origin and SpaceX were showing a revolutionary ability to land their rockets and thereby make them reusable, thereby bringing the cost per launch down significantly, the two companies went in rather different directions, some of them forced, some of them intentional. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket is mostly NASA funded and has become the most reliable rocket ever built and the cheapest pound for pound to low Earth orbit. Of course, it doesn't have the lift capability of an Atlas or an Ariane rocket, so it's not quite an apples for apples comparison. But then, They've also developed the Falcon 9 on steroids, the Falcon Heavy, which can lift much heavier payloads to or beyond Earth orbit for a fraction of the cost of other providers. It's already launched a communication satellite for the Arab League and a number of US Air Force payloads in a single launch, with 
numerous high-profile DoD and NASA missions planned over the next four years. Their prototype fully reusable mega rocket Starship has also benefited from NASA and DoD funding which has reduced the development cost to SpaceX itself and meant that it's been designed with numerous customers in mind ready for massive payloads to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars or pretty much any solid body anywhere in the solar system. US friendly customers and militaries are now falling over themselves to help SpaceX develop Starships such as the new capability this would afford them for payload to orbit, exploration of the solar system and sending heavy military logistics anywhere on Earth in under an hour. Blue Origin on the other hand broke away from the NASA bosom and decided to mostly self-fund their commercial suborbital rocket New Shepard and their orbital rocket New Glenn. Now, to me, this seems like the key factor that has transformed their fates, either for good or for bad. And the fact that Blue Origin decided to try and get back in with NASA for their lunar lander program shows that Bezos regrets that decision to put some distance between Blue Origin and NASA. Then they got all pissy when they failed in their bid and sued NASA, which achieved absolutely nothing except slowing down NASA's moon program, alienating Blue Origin, and turning the spaceflight interest of public against Jeff Bezos. But Blue Origin went full throttle with effort and funds into its commercial suborbital rocket, New Shepard, for the fee-paying public to get their weightlessness kicks. Simultaneously, they've been working on their reusable New Glenn Mega Rocket that's bigger than the Falcon Heavy, but will still only be able to lift about 70% as much cargo to Earth orbit as the Falcon Heavy, if New Glenn is ever finished and becomes operational. Blue Origin has continued to push back its expected maiden launch from 2020 initially, adding an extra year on for each year that passes, so New Glenn is now expected to test launch no earlier than 2023. And one of the reasons for this is the need to get New Glenn's BE-4 rocket engines right for its other customer, United Launch Alliance. ULA are replacing their dependable Atlas rocket, which requires Russian RD-180 rocket engines, with their new Vulcan Centaur rocket, powered by Blue Origin's new BE-4 rocket engines. As ULA have significant US government contracts and launches scheduled for Vulcan Centaur, Blue Origin are making sure they can prioritise this customer to the detriment of the new Glenn schedule. And all this means that in the 22 years that Bezos has been developing space systems, he didn't get a single person off the ground until summer 2021. All flights on this new Shepard rocket last around 10 minutes, with 3 to 4 minutes of weightlessness at the edge of space, for about a quarter of a million dollars per seat. For just under half a million dollars, Virgin Galactic will now give you a space plane ride to the edge of space, lasting two and a half hours with the same three to four minutes of weightlessness. But while Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic have been chasing the suborbital kicks, the world has arguably moved on. By SpaceX mostly, they've gone way past suborbital with their Falcon 9 that started sending payloads to the International Space Station in 2012 humans to the space station in 2020, three days in orbit for paying customers in 2021, and paying customers to the International Space Station in 2022. On top of that, they've had their Falcon Heavy for bigger payloads, and as we're recording this, the Starship Mega Rocket is perhaps just a month away from its first orbital flight. New Glenn, by contrast, has been shrouded in mysticism and secrecy, so unless New Glenn does debut in early 2023 and its cost per pound to orbit is a real steal, it may find it's missed the boat again to Starship. Arguably, it's already missed the boat to Falcon Heavy anyway. So is this fair? Am I being too harsh on Blue Origin? Tell me off or put me right in the comments below. But it astounds me that Bezos always seems to be a couple of steps behind for someone so shrewd in business and with the same desire as Musk for space systems. Could this all come crashing down on Bezos? And what's one launch of the Uppy Downy Fairground ride every two months about? It's fully reusable, so it should be able to launch every other day. Are all the world's millionaires waiting for orbital rides in SpaceX's Dragon Capsule? Let me know what you think about this and also let me know if I've changed your mind in the comments below. And if you want to hear more of my thoughts on Blue Origin and SpaceX's rivalry, you really need to check out these videos too.